Welcome to Nobody Told Me. I'm Jan Black. And I'm Laura Owens. This is the 100th episode of Nobody Told Me, and we wanted to look back at some of the more memorable Nobody Told Me lessons our guests have shared with us. We've truly been honored to speak with each of our guests, and they've given us so many wonderful anecdotes and pieces of advice that it's tough to select highlights. All of our guests have been open and honest, and the stories they've related have been stories we can all identify with. Take, for example, Mitch Album. Mitch's book, Tuesdays with Maury, is the most successful memoir ever published. His first novel, The Five People You Meet in Heaven, is the most successful U.S. hardcover first adult novel ever. And now, Mitch has written a sequel to The Five People You Meet in Heaven. It's called The Next Person You Meet in Heaven. Here's what Mitch had to say when we asked him, what's your Nobody Told Me lesson? That's a great question, and you have a wonderful show just based on that premise alone. Boy, boy, talk about being able to uh, explore the world through a single question. I have found, I'll answer in a contemporary fashion because of where I am now, um, I have found that nobody told me what it was going to be like when all the older people in my life who I used to go to for wisdom were gone, and I was going to have to be the one to come up with the answers on my own and to advise people who are younger than me. Somehow, even though intellectually you know it, you always kind of think that there's going to be, you know, your parents or somebody who was older or wiser that you'll be able to go to. And I've now lived long enough that both of my parents are gone. Maury's gone. The old people, uh, you know, clerics that I wrote about in, in, in Have a Little Faith are gone. And, you know, you just don't have the wisdom in your life anymore that you used to think you were always going to be able to turn to. And then it's a test to see, well, how much of what they gave you stuck, you know, and how much of it is inside you that you can now employ and give to someone else. I I remember a rabbi giving a sermon many, many years ago when I was too young to even really comprehend it. He talked about uh, his his last older relative, an uncle of his, had died. And when he was at the funeral, as he stood over the grave, he said to him, so he looked around at the family and he realized he was the oldest one still left living. And he said, I'm next. And that realization that, you know, logically then he was the next one to go changed everything in his life. And, and while I'm not quite there chronologically in terms of like all the people that I used to look to for help or for guidance or for wisdom, I'm, I'm there now. And nobody told me how lonely that was going to be and, and how, how much you wish that you had spent even more time talking to all those people and, and learning from them because when they're gone, they're gone. And while we're on the subject of loss, one of the toughest things that can be faced by a girl or a woman of any age is the loss of her mother. Our guest, Hope Edelman, knows more about that than most of us. Hope is an expert in the field of early mother loss and mother-daughter relationships. Hope lost her mother at a young age, and she's written extensively about that. She's the author of the books Motherless Daughters and Motherless Mothers, among others. Here's what Hope Edelman had to say when we asked, what's your nobody told me lesson? Nobody told me that grieving the loss of such a close loved one is a lifelong process. It doesn't ever go away, but that doesn't mean it's a lifelong struggle. It's just something that's always there and is constantly being revisited and renegotiated. But um, I don't you know, I thought that I would go through the five stages of grief and then I'd be done. And that it's not like that for very many people. Uh, there's a great relief, though, in just accepting, OK, you know, this is a lifelong process and I'm going to try to do it as gracefully as I can. Getting over a broken heart is one of the challenges most of us face at some point in life. Psychologist Guy Winch is the author of How to Fix a Broken Heart, which aims to help people cope after a breakup or death of someone they love. Guy is an in-demand keynote speaker who is a leading advocate for integrating the science of emotional health into every aspect of our daily lives. Here's what Guy Winch had to say when we asked him, what's your nobody told me lesson? I'm, 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 I'm hesitating because I have 10. Um, but, um, <laughs> but, 
because nobody told nobody told me most of these things about heartbreak. Um, what, what the people what I knew about heartbreak before I started, you know, reading these things, and and is that oh, you know, it just takes time. Time will heal all, and just you know, be able to talk to someone once in a while. That's it. And heartbreak is so much more complicated than that. And and what it does to us, mind, body, and soul, is so much more complicated than that. And and the and we have to be. And this is my work in general with emotional health. Emotional health doesn't just happen. We need to take a very much a leadership managing uh, a position on it. We have to be in charge of our emotional health. We have to proactively um, stake it out and do the things that are good for us and avoid the things that are bad for us and understand the difference because we have no clue what those things are to begin with. So what nobody told me is that to recover emotionally from any kind of emotional blow um, is not just a matter of time. We need to proactively manage our recovery and make it happen uh, rather than just let it happen. It's hard to think of anyone who's had more of a physical and emotional recovery to make than our guest Elizabeth Smart. As you're probably aware, in 2002, when she was only 14 years old, Elizabeth was kidnapped at knife point by a pedophile from her home in Utah. She endured nine months of being shackled, raped, starved, and threatened by her kidnapper and his wife before she was rescued and reunited with her family. Here's what Elizabeth Smart had to tell us when we asked her, what's your nobody told me lesson? It's, it's your decisions, really, that define you. I mean, nobody, nobody told me that. And for years, like when I go to the grocery store, people would be like, hey, I know you. You're that girl who was kidnapped. And I was like, oh, that, that's great. Like, great, great. My whole life, that's, that's what I'm going to be known for is the girl that was kidnapped. That's just, just wonderful. Um, and, but then like, as I got older and I grew up more, I started to realize, yeah, people might recognize me as that. That's might be how they know me. That's fine. But that's not what defines me. That's not what makes me who I am. It's it's what I decide. It's what I do that ultimately makes me who I am. So sure, I could allow myself to be that girl for the rest of my life. You know, I could never, I could never be happy. I could never move on. I could, you know, just stay at home and be miserable. That would be easy to do. That'd be really easy to do. And yeah, that way I would be the girl that was kidnapped for the rest of my life. Or I can do something about it. I can decide. I can make a choice. Elizabeth Smart became a household name as a result of her terrifying kidnapping. Nastia Lukin became known to the public as an Olympic gymnastics all-around gold medalist. But life hasn't always been easy for her. Nastia's passion these days lies in inspiring others. Here's what she told us when we asked her, what's your nobody told me lesson? Well, I mean, I think this is like so simple and so cliche, but, you know, life is hard. Um, You know, I think... And and maybe now I've been told that, but I think at an early age, I, you know, had to figure that out with, you know, different obstacles that I had to overcome. And, um, you know, before the Olympics, I remember, you know, the two years, really four years before I was kind of like on top of the world and had won two back-to-back junior titles, two back-to-back senior titles, you know, had become a world champion. I, I started winning all these competitions and then all of a sudden I had an ankle injury and I had the worst nationals in my life the year before. And everyone kind of just started turning their backs on me and now saying, you know, 17 years old, I was too old and too injured and there were girls better than me and and all this stuff. And, and I remember just being like so heartbroken and disappointed because it was coming from the same people that had supported me just a few months ago. And so, you know, I think in that moment, I truly started realizing that things aren't always going to go your way. Um, and, and that's why kind of going back to the beginning of that's why it's so important to surround yourself with the right people, the people that are going to believe in you, no matter what, the people that are going to, you know, be on this journey with you, regardless of, you know, a placement or the amount of money that you bring in or, you know, some kind of achievement. It, it really is truly about, um, the kind of person that you are. And so, you know, my mom has always told me it's just, it's so much better to be, you know, a nice human being than a successful gymnast or a successful businesswoman, because 
that's what you want people to remember you for is, is being nice, is being kind, is being compassionate, as opposed to only remembering you for winning a gold medal. Our Nobody Told Me interview continues in just a minute. But first, we wanted to tell you a little bit about one of our sponsors, Poshmark. Instead of buying things new, you can shop for millions of closets across America using the free Poshmark app on your phone. Or if you're like me, you can use the Poshmark website on your laptop. Laura has been buying and selling things on Poshmark for a long time, but I just discovered it recently. I've had a chiffon skirt by Alfani for years, and I wanted to buy others like it. So I just searched on Poshmark.com for Alfani chiffon skirt and found several in my size and definitely my price. One of them was new and just $5. I bought it right away and it arrived on my doorstep a few days later. Poshmark has things for women, men, and kids. You won't believe the brands you'll find and the deals you can get. See something you want? Make the seller an offer. And if you're like me, there may be things in your closet that you'd like to sell. Poshmark is a great place to sell those items that are no longer right for you, but may be just right for someone else. Shipping is easy for both the buyer and seller. Poshmark is fun. It's like Black Friday every day with great deals on designer brands like Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, and Tory Burch. And we're excited to tell you that listeners of Nobody Told Me get $5 off their first purchase on Poshmark. Just enter the invite code Nobody Told Me when you sign up. That's invite code Nobody Told Me when you sign up on Poshmark. Our guest, best-selling author Sean Acor, is one of the world's leading experts on the connection between happiness and success. His latest book is called Big Potential, How Transforming the Pursuit of Success Raises Our Achievement, Happiness, and Well-Being. And here's what Sean Acor had to say when we asked him, what's your nobody told me lesson? I, I mean, I've had so many things I've learned, honestly. I mean, I, I'll tell you, I, I think the two biggest one for me was no one told me that success wasn't going to lead to happiness. I kept thinking when I hit some goals that I'd feel happier and it was so depressing when it didn't work out like, that way, right? I think how happy I'll be when I get married. Oh, I mean, once I have kids, I mean, once they're in the right school or once I have a, a book, like I thought once I had a book, I'd feel really happy. And then as soon as it's written, you're like, I hope people like it. Yeah, <laughs> right, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Like, and then, and then, then as the numbers climb, you're like, oh, I, I wish I had numbers like this person. And <laughs> it's a never ending cycle. Right. And I feel it, it's easy to see that not with books, but in everything, podcast numbers or viewership online or likes that we get. So I wish somebody had told me earlier in the process, it would have made me so much calmer for them to say, um, you know, it's, it's one of the things I say to people that I get people that email me and they say, my son's got like nine colleges he's thinking through and he has no idea what to do. And it's causing him so much stress. And what I want to tell him is happiness exists down all nine of those options and not going to college. Like you can find happiness if you find the right fit with the people that you're around you, and if you keep feeling this joy as you move towards your potential. And you can find that in almost any environment worldwide. Um, So I wish somebody had told me earlier that success, you don't have to have success to have happiness, but that happiness could lead to greater levels of success. And then the other thing I wish I had known, no one told me that happiness was something that I could do with other people. I thought it was a solitary task that I have to do by myself and maybe even compete with my happiness with other people. And what we're finding is a completely different picture. It's not survival of the fittest. It's survival of the best fit with the people around you and finding people that support your happiness that bring out, bring out the best in you instead of just the stress. I, 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 would have, I would have focused much more on that as I was pursuing happiness. And I think it would have made it much easier earlier on in the process. Success is a topic a lot of our guests have talked about. Dark Horse is the very appropriate title of the new book by Harvard researcher Todd Rose, which looks at men and women who've achieved impressive success, even though nobody saw them coming. Todd shared his insights into why the standard formula for success may not be the best formula for you. And he had this to say when we asked him, what's your nobody told me lesson? You know, nobody told me and um, I think nobody told any of us that um, prioritizing personal fulfillment is by far the most reliable path to success and happiness. It, 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 it just won't be the same path as everybody else, um, but that does not mean it's uncertain. And that actually succumbing to this standard path where we're treating ourselves as the same as everybody else and trying to be better is a reliable path to like mediocrity and misery. And that you can do this and you can live a life of joy and prowess 
Um, and it's right there if you just take the right steps. Success can be a matter of life and death for Chris Voss, a former international hostage negotiator for the FBI whose career brought him face to face with bank robbers and terrorists. He's taught negotiation at leading universities, and he shared with us the negotiation skills that helped him save lives. Chris says life is a series of negotiations you should be prepared for. And he explains all about that in his book, Never Split the Difference, Negotiating as if Your Life Depended on It. His nobody told me lesson is a simple one. Well, you know, nobody told me that letting the other side go first and hearing them out would not only help me make more agreements, but the indirect route would get me agreements faster. Like it is this crazy time hack that I can get you to agreeing to my deal and my course of action a lot faster if I let you go first. And I think since we both have got stuff to say, I've just doubled the amount of time by letting you go first that it's going to take to make the deal. When in fact, I may not have to say much at all because so much of your case might be what I wanted anyway. It can be hard to let the other guy go first, and it can be tough to say, I'm sorry. Have you ever longed for someone to say, I'm sorry, to you? Our guest, Dr. Harriet Lerner, had a lot to say about apologies and why they can be so important in our relationships. Harriet is a well-known psychologist and the author of 12 books, the latest of which is called Why Won't You Apologize? Healing Big Betrayals and Everyday Hurts. Her nobody told me lesson? Nobody told me that there is a cost for rushing into premature forgiveness when the other person hasn't earned it, that there's a cost for denying one's legitimate anger and pushing oneself into a premature forgiveness. I don't think anyone told me how important listening, non-defensive listening is to a hurt or angry person. The the emphasis was always on, you know, having good verbal skills and being a good talker. And no one said to me, you know, whether it's the apology or whatever it is, your relationships will rise or fall on the quality of your listening. I don't think anyone ever told me that. And I don't think anyone ever told me how profoundly important a heartfelt apology is, not just as a gift to the hurt party, but no one told me that our self-respect, our level of maturity rests on our ability to see ourselves objectively and to take a clear-eyed look at the way our behavior affects others and to take responsibility when we act at another person's expense. Um, I think a lot of men, by the way, no one tells them that a good apology earns them respect in the eyes of others. So men that, you know, I interviewed and worked with, they fear the opposite. They were told, you know, you apologize, you're going to, you're putting your head on the chopping block. You're giving someone else the advantage. We love hearing the life lessons our guests have to pass on. Communications coach Carmine Gallo had some great ideas to share. Carmine's latest book is called Five Stars, The Communication Secrets to Get from Good to Great. His nobody told me lesson? Nobody told me something that I've, uh, I wish I had known when I was in college. Um, and I think it applies today more than ever. And I, I've just recently, maybe in the last 10 years, really started to figure it out. We can choose how to respond to whatever it is, <laughs> to a criticism. Uh, we can choose how to respond to uh, the craziness we see in the news. You, you know, we have more control over our, ourselves than we think we do, at least certain to our mental state. And I, uh, I remember reading something about Bill Gates, and Bill Gates early in his career said he turned off the TV. I think he disconnected entirely to uh, unplug the radio from his car 
because he didn't want to be too distracted. He only wanted to focus on those things that he wanted to focus on and not be bombarded by information that took him into so many different directions. And I realized, oh, I, I got to start focusing on the books that lift me higher, that teach me something, that improve. This is a self-improvement show, right? Right. I mean, that's the whole point. You got you got to focus on the speakers who are going to lift you higher, the podcasts who are going to lift you higher, <laughs> the, uh, the the type of uh, uh, information outlets that are going to lift you higher. And then when you hear all of this stuff going on, whether it's political or whether it's criticisms about you and, uh, um, or whatever it might be, uh, you choose how to respond. You can choose how to respond. You can turn that on and off. And, and that's something that a lot of motivational speakers have, have talked about. But I think it's only in the last 10 years. I wish I had known that when I was 22. Right. really would have helped. Knowing how to quickly get a new source of income is something that can help a lot of people. Our guest, Chris Gillibo, had some great ideas about that. Chris is the New York Times bestselling author of The $100 Startup. His latest book is called Side Hustle, From Idea to Income in 27 Days. His nobody told me lesson is to realize there's more than one way to achieve what you want. Maybe something that I, I kind of picked up on eventually, and I think is true throughout life, is uh, like there's this assumption that all these things that you have to have, all these prerequisites you need to have, you need to have like this sort, sort of education. You need to like go through these, you know, step one, step two, step three, before you can get to step four. And unfortunately, for for whatever reason, I kind of picked up relatively early on is that often there's a way to get to step four without going through step one, two, and three. Or maybe you can go from step one to step four. Or there's probably, here's what I'm coming to, like there is an actual answer. I think nobody told me that for most things in life, there are more than one way, there's more than one way to accomplish it. And there's a traditional path, and that's fine. It's not like it's a bad path. But there's probably some alternatives to it. And if you want to do it faster, if you want to do it differently, if you want to do it in a way that plays to your strengths or it's just you know, more motivating to you, there probably is some other way. So that's what I would say to everybody. There's always another way. Another guest with some great advice is Amy Morin. She's a psychotherapist and the author of 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. It's an international best-selling book that's being translated into more than 25 languages. Her TED Talk, The Secret of Becoming Mentally Strong, has had more than 6 million views. Her Nobody Told Me lesson? I think it, nobody told me that mental muscle is a lot like building physical muscle. It was things that I learned by watching people, but nobody told it to me in grad school or anything else. But just like if you wanted to be physically strong, you can go to the gym and you can work out. Same as for mental strength. If you want to become mentally strong, there are lots of exercises you can do to reach your greatest potential in life. Another one of our favorite guests on Nobody Told Me is leadership expert Drew Dudley. His TEDx talk is called Everyday Leadership, The Lollipop Moment, and it's been voted one of the 15 most inspirational TED Talks of all time. Drew has written a new book called This is Day One, A Practical Guide to Leadership That Matters. He has some great thoughts on putting life into perspective, and he has more than one nobody told me lesson. Nobody told me that the biggest impact I was going to have on the world would have nothing to do with my plans. Uh, nobody told me that it was in these unplanned, unconscious consequences of my actions that I would have the, the biggest impact. Nobody told me that ultimately looking good on paper wasn't what the goal of my life should be. And nobody told me that I was living my life for people I hadn't met yet. And that to me is, is something that took me a while to learn is that think about it. If any of you out there are listening and you're young and you're in high school, you're living your life for college admissions counselors and you haven't met any of them. And for those university students out there, you're living your life for the first person who's going to read your resume and give you a job. And you haven't met that person yet. If you're a young professional, you're doing all of this so that somebody higher up or in another company is going to see you and they're going to hire you one day and you've never met them. And sometimes we're trying to acquire and achieve and look good so that one day out there, whoever that person is that's going to marry us, sees us <laughs> and says, I'm impressed by that. And for a lot of us, we haven't met that person either. Nobody told me how easy it would be to live your life for people you haven't met yet. And what that does, it pulls your attention off the people who surround you every day, the people who have gotten you to where you are, and the people that you, if you choose to, 
can impact positively every single day around you. I wish somebody had told me that. I wish they'd sat me down the first day on day one of high school and said, you are about to spend 15 years living your life for people you haven't met yet. And as a result, you're not always going to consciously get everything you can from the people around you now and consciously decide to make their lives better too. Not that I didn't and not that we're all not doing it. The problem is we're kind of doing it unconsciously. I wish someone had told me that. I really do. Space shuttle astronaut Mike Mullane shared with us some wonderful observations about life here on Earth and in space. And Mike had a down-to-earth answer when we asked him what his nobody-told-me lesson is. I'll tell you what it is. Easy. Nobody told me that I was better than I thought. I took uh, West Point to open my eyes to that. When I was in high school, I was... A nerd is an exaggeration. I was beyond nerd in that direction. Um, never had a single date in high school. I have one dedication in my senior high school yearbook. Uh, one, just one. And I'm not kidding. And you know what that one dedication reads? It what? reads, you miss Korea, but here's hoping you make Vietnam. That's the only dedication I have in my entire high school senior yearbook. You know, I wasn't oh. popular. I wasn't a star athlete. You know, I never felt I was good looking. Um, very uh, insecure, was always constantly comparing myself to the jocks and to the popular kids. Um, you know, I, I was, I, I just, you know, I, I did not think I had anything to offer. I ended up at West Point by some miracle. I was a third alternate for my congressional district. How I ended up at West Point is just a miracle, frankly. But West Point changed me because there you didn't have a choice. They set goals and and you know it was what I'd wake up in the morning and think look ahead to these athletic academic and leadership challenges that West Point put in front of me and say I can't do it I can't do it there's no way I can do it and at the end of the day I could look back and see I'd done it and that was what somebody nobody ever told me is that I had those deep deep reserves that would allow me to do things that I didn't think I was capable of and that is something that I think is latent in all of us. I think we're all better than we think we are. But it takes challenge to realize that. Space shuttle astronaut Mike Mullane talked about not being popular in high school. And another one of our guests, psychology professor Mitch Prinstein, has studied how popularity affects our success, our relationships, and our happiness. Professor Prinstein has written about that in the book, Popular, the power of likability in a status-obsessed world. His nobody told me lesson is a simple one. Nobody told me that how popular you were when you were in adolescence would make a difference in the rest of your life. But if they had, and if they had told me that the kind of popularity I so desperately wanted when I was a teenager would ultimately uh, not matter, I think that I might have saved myself a lot of worrying as a teenager. Over 18 million Americans are shopaholics. They suffer from a disorder that makes them buy things compulsively, which can cause all sorts of problems in their lives. Our guest, Dr. April Lane Benson, is a psychologist who specializes in the treatment of compulsive buying disorder. Dr. Benson is the author of To Buy or Not to Buy, Why We Overshop and How to Stop. Her Nobody Told Me lesson? I wish somebody had told me that you can never get enough of what you don't really need. It's like looking for love in all the wrong places. If I think that I'm going to feel better if I get just the right pair of black boots and I find the pair that I think is going to do it, I happen to be already in debt, but what what it's going to do for me, at least what I think these black boots, these magical black boots are going to do, they're going to get me this promotion. And the, the black boots in and of themselves will never do it. It has something to do with the way I feel I'm going to look and feel about myself in the black boots. But it's very unlikely that the black boots are going to do that. I've got to see that I feel deserving of that promotion, whether I'm wearing old black boots, new black boots, or no black boots. You know, what I need to do is to be working from the inside out on how I feel about myself, Mm -hmm. rather than 
using what I put on my feet to bridge that gap. Another one of our favorite guests is Mark Rufinacht, the founder and president of Dogs for Diabetics. Mark is recognized in the Guinness Book of World Records for training the world's first dog to detect and alert on changing blood sugars in diabetics. And we asked Mark, what's your nobody told me lesson? I think that boils down to two things. One is um, it's okay to be different. Um, With diabetes, you're different. And I felt like I lived a life where I felt like I was different most of my life. And And I've realized through this process of meeting other diabetics that everybody is an individual and everybody is different. So first is it's okay to be different. And the second one is, it's okay to be me or it's okay to be you. Live your life as an individual and um, be accepted for who you are, whether you have diabetes, whether you have cancer, whether you have, you know, something else. Um, Be who you are, Um, but it's okay to be different. Nobody Told Me features two generations, Laura, who's a millennial, and me, her mother, who's a seasoned adult. We've had a lot of conversations with people who've shared with us their life lessons, and one of those was a member of our own family who's learned a lot of lessons and created quite a legacy along the way. And my dad, Ron Owens, was a guest on our show. He's a legendary radio broadcaster with more than 42 years as a talk show host at KGO Radio in San Francisco. He's also a member of the National Radio Hall of Fame in Chicago, which the Atlanta Constitution called the greatest honor a radio professional can achieve. His nobody told me lesson is to stay positive. Invariably, every struggle still has an end. At some point, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And what you need to do is figure out how to cope with it on a day-to-day basis. But accept the fact that you've got it. Don't dwell on the fact that you've got this problem. If anything, think about how the light is there at the end of the tunnel. You're going to get there. It's just a matter of when. You've been listening to the 100th episode of Nobody Told Me. We hope you'll subscribe to Nobody Told Me, review the podcast on Apple Podcasts, and tell your friends about it as well. I'm Jan Black. And I'm Laura Owens. Thank you so much for joining us. 